hardly know, sir. I changed so many times since this morning, you see. And... I do not see. Explain yourself. Well, I'm afraid I can't explain myself, sir. Because I'm not myself, you know, myself, sir. Because I'm not myself, you know. I do not know. Well, I can't put it any more clearly, for it isn't clear to me. You. Who are you? Well, don't you think you ought to tell me... <coughs> who you are first? Why? Everything is so confusing. Well? Keep your temper. Is that all? No. Executively, what is your problem? Executively, what is your problem? Did you know that Baal is the god of smoke? Years back, we released a documentary exposing this, and Lord willing, we plan to redo it and upload it in the near future. Billions of people pay homage and worship Baal on a daily basis when they partake in the ritual of smoking. There are many ways people pay homage to the God of smoke, whether it is by cigarettes and tobacco, vaping or marijuana. We have exposed many of these different types in past documentaries like sorcery, the dopamine God, and vaping demons in the mist. But in this documentary, we are going to microscopically examine and expose another layer of this diabolical agenda. Today we will expose the ancient ritual of hookah, the bowl of sacrifice. Wow, this place is really cool, Mahmoud. A lot of people are not as accepting of Muslim culture as you are. Well, I think everything about it is the best, like this hookah. I mean, who doesn't want to sit around the table with a bunch of guys and suck on the same thing? Now, some of you might ask me if I've already done documentaries exposing smoking, whether it's cigarettes, marijuana, or vaping, what is the point of doing a documentary exposing hookah? I mean, ain't they all the same to begin with? And although that is a good question on the surface, I want to tell you why it has to be done. What you have to realize, and what most of you probably already know, is that in the occult, not every spell and curse is on the same level of power. There are many different levels of power when it comes to rituals, curses, and spells. So what this means is, although smoking a cigarette, vaping, or marijuana would still be Baal worship, I truly believe that hookah has a more powerful spell on the masses. And we'll get into why I'm saying that soon in this short documentary ask yourself the question don't you find it strange that in only a handful of years this hookah ritual has become so popular in america so let's break down why 
it is so important for the dragon to push as many levels of his witchcraft into society as he can. And when it comes to the hookah, which, mind you, is a very ancient ritual that began in India as a form of worship. We'll get into that a little bit later. But why the push? Because remember, Mystery Babylon, the mother of all harlots. So the devil wants to curse as many as he can. And you see, on the ancient demonic tree of Babylon, there are many branches and many levels to this agenda. And understand that every spell and curse has a different level of power. And the deeper the ritual, the more potent the spell. Even just in the last handful of years, you can clearly see the agenda to push the hookah to be popular in society, whether on TV shows and cartoons and movies. Now you see it in restaurants, in literal bars dedicated to this ritual. And it's become so popular and normal as a way of life that people are doing it in their cars, by the pool. You can't even get a haircut without seeing this ritual of the hookah taking place. Remember that most people are blinded by the God of this world and they do what they see on social media and the tell I vision. It is quite clear how the music industry is playing a very important role with this agenda of the hookah ritual and the bowl of sacrifice. Remember that the whole world is a stage and there are many actors on the chessboard of deception. Did you know that these people in high places that are pushing this agenda of the hookah ritual literally have Instagram models on their payroll? You see, these people are not dumb. They know that if they can put beautiful women in these hookah lounges and bars and restaurants and commercials and videos, it will naturally gravitate the men to want to be a part of that which they see good looking women involved with. Not to mention, it also has an impact on young sisters as well to want to look up to the Instagram models and smoke hookah like them. The demonic circle of transference as I've already told you and will continue to peel back the layers and expose that the hookah is a ritual and as millions of people gather together every day and form a circle around this altar there is more than just a spiritual consequence when one partakes in this satanic ritual and before we talk about the spiritual dangers of getting involved with this we must also examine the effects that will literally manifest in the physical realm have you ever heard the term transferring of spirits this is when a spirit can be transferred from one person to another. But there are usually power objects and things involved to be the bridge to connect people together for that demon to transfer around the circle. So what do you think happens when people gather around in a circle and place this altar to bail in the midst of them and all partake in the ritual in one accord to pay homage to the God of smoke. This is how demonic spirits are so easily passed around when people do these things. However, let us examine, let us watch these two videos and see if there's also a physical manifestation when being involved in this occult 
ritual. We see it all the time on your social media feeds. Hookah is a popular pastime for many of you watching at home, but you may want to rethink sharing that pipe. A nurse has been warning smokers they can also spread herpes. I had to ask a local hookah lounge owner if his customers have to worry about any lip STDs. If you're in Atlanta and you're a party girl or you like to club or you like to hookah, listen to the story because this could change your life. So a couple of weeks ago, a few of my friends hit me up and wanted to go club hopping, but unfortunately I couldn't go because I had just started a new job. They went without me, they partied, ate, drank, hookah, yada, 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 you know, the, the drill. Um, a few days ago, my friend Ava gets an outbreak on her mouth and she didn't really see it as a big deal. She didn't know what it was until the next day, she sends me a picture of how worse it got. And I told her that it looked like herpes. Even I was second guessing myself as to whether it would be herpes because we don't sleep around. We're all single, we're all celibate, waiting for the right person to come around, focused on school, just, you know, minding our business. So me and a couple of the other girls tell her to go get checked out. Before her appointment to get checked out, another one of my friends that was with Ava that night, let's just call her Ava, has the same outbreak on her mouth area. She took a picture, posted it in the group chat, and another one of the girls that was there that night had like a large bump beside her lip, but it didn't grow out to be an outbreak yet like i know what herpes looks like so when i saw it i like almost knew for a fact it was herpes but it was the fact that none of them had ever talked about kissing anyone new um none of us smoke um you know what i mean it was just really random for it to be herpes especially for all of them so the second girl who got the outbreak let's just call her melissa her appointment comes before ava's and um the doctor is mentioning a bunch of ways where she could have got it kissing blah 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 push comes to shove they end up figuring out that she could have possibly gotten this herpes on her lip from the hookah so when she tells us that that's what the doctor said we're like um what like that's crazy they end up telling me that they only did hookah at one club that they went to i don't want to say the name because i don't want to get sued for defamation or anything like that but i believe they were at a bar or a section in the club and they were making friends with this girl who was there with her friend and she ended up leaving um, and gave my friends her hookah so they didn't have to buy one. And even though they all had new and different hookah tips, they weren't sharing their hookah tips, it is very possible that they could have gotten herpes from sharing that hookah. And it makes sense when you think about it because a lot of saliva goes through the hookah pipe. Um, some people have braces, some people have cuts in their gums, so the blood mixes with the saliva and the rest is history. I'm not a doctor, I'm not a nurse, I'm not a scientist, I'm not any of that. But so far, that is the only conclusion that we have as to how all four of them got herpes. Thankfully, I had to work that day, so I'm not a victim of this. But this has definitely changed my opinion on hookah, and I don't think I'll ever get a hookah again, even if it's just my own. Are not they which eat of the sacrifices partakers of the altar? What say I then? That the idol is anything? Or that which is offered in sacrifice to idols is anything? But I say that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to devils and not to God. And I would not that ye should have fellowship with devils. Ye cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. Ye cannot be partakers of the Lord's table and of the table of devils. Do we provoke the Lord to jealousy? Are we stronger than he? I want you to take a walk with me and together you and I will expose this demonic agenda and break down the satanic symbolism of this altar dedicated to Baal called the hookah. The first thing we must establish is that the creation and origin and purpose of the hookah was always based upon a religious occult ritual. It wasn't just for recreational purposes like they make it out to be in the United States. And although the pride of countries will debate on where it was first invented, evidence clearly points to India. However, it has spread throughout the entire Middle East from 
India, Turkey, Egypt, all the way into Iran, formerly known as Persia. And now that you have this understanding that this is not just something that was for recreational purposes, but in fact, the origin and the intent of this device was an altar dedicated to an occult ritual practice. But remember, over and over, I have told you in past documentaries, it is all about mystery Babylon. The dragon has been waiting a very long time for this to come to fruition. The unification of all false religions in the occult under one banner in the last hour to try to get as many as he can to participate in these demonic rituals to provoke the Most High God to anger. Now before we examine the actual hookah and break it down piece by piece to expose it for what it truly is, the altar of Baal, the god of smoke. I want you to first remember that Mystery Babylon is the mother of harlots, the unification of all false religions under one banner in this last hour. Why do I continue to say that? Because I have to remind you what this agenda truly is all about. And before we examine and break down the hookah itself, I want us to focus our attention on the occult symbolism that surrounds this demonic ceremony done by millions of people. While doing my research, I started to notice that there would be so many false gods and occult symbols integrated into this religious practice. For example, you will notice that these hookahs can be dedicated to many false gods and occult symbols, such as Ganesha, you notice that this false god from India is called the Lord of the Hookah. They even have dedicated it to Buddha. And you will see in lounges and Hookah bars, they will integrate Egyptian gods as well. Not to mention the stars and symbolism as part of the ritual. The bullock of the sin offering which is for himself. And he shall take a censer full of burning coals of fire, full of burning coals of fire, full of burning coals of fire, from off the altar before the Lord, and his hands full of sweet incense beaten small, and bring it within the veil. And he shall put the incense upon the fire before the Lord, that the cloud of the incense may cover the mercy seat that is upon the testimony, that he die not. Did you just hear what the word of the Lord said? An ancient worship, and as part of an offering ritual, hot coals were used in the ceremony to the Most High God, which included a cloud of incense, of sweet smelling incense. Are you starting to see the game that is being played? Remember that Lucifer said, I will be like the Most High God. So what does he do? He creates these altars that can fit on a table and be surrounded by the worshipers of Baal. And just like 
the children of Israel in the days of Moses, making an offering, a sacrificial offering to the Most High God with hot coals of fire. The enemy causes the children of Babylon to give their offering with hot coals of fire. Brothers and sisters, you have to understand that the dragon wants to receive worship down to the very details. In a corrupt and perverted way, he wants to copy the ways of the Most High God and try to turn light into darkness. But what if I told you is deeper than you think? Then the earth shook and trembled. The foundations of heaven moved and shook because he was wroth. There went up a smoke out of his nostrils and fire out of his mouth devoured. Coals were kindled by it. There went up a smoke out of his nostrils and fire out of his mouth devoured. Coals were kindled by it. There went up a smoke out of his nostrils and fire out of his mouth devoured. Coals were kindled by it. And now you see, just as the Most High God commanded the use of fire and coal, incense to produce massive amounts of smoke during the offering, you clearly can see the mock ceremony of the enemy wanting to be like the Most High God. And all through the occult, you can find the use of fire and burning coals in many demonic ceremonies and rituals. And again, it is because the dragon said he will be like the Most High God. And as we prepare to break down this altar to Baal, I want us to examine the common trend on the way the coals are presented during the demonic hookah ritual. I want you to see this video and we'll be right back. Management and foil. Always begin with a predetermined pattern based on the size of your bowl. Using cubes, place three of them in a triangle. Using cubes, place three of them in a triangle and make sure to remove any small pieces that may break away. These can ruin your session. Moving the coals closer to the center will increase heat. Keep them sufficiently far away, but remember every millimeter makes a difference. If the bottom of your coal black out, turn them one face sideways instead of upside down to get them red again. Move your coals to fresher areas for the second round, guaranteeing optimal flavor preservation. Do this and you'll master. Do this and you'll master. Are you starting to see it now? You see, that's the problem with so many so-called followers of the Messiah is they take everything like it's a joke, but it's pretty clear to the children of Lucifer, this is not a game to them. Every detail of every ritual is accounted for. Maybe it's real to them because they're seeing results in that in which they put their demonic faith into. But you'll notice this common trend of three cubes in the form of a pyramid. I mean, we really don't have to go into details. It's quite obvious, but I want us to think about the cube for a moment. Because in reality, this is not a natural form that coal will shape into. This is purposely made. If you know anything about the occult, you will know that the cube is very important to Mystery Babylon. Whether it's in Islam with the Kaaba or the cubes of Saturnalia that you can find across the earth. So when we break this down step by step, we see that 
The enemy is simply taking that which was created from the beginning as a pattern to offer a sacrifice to the Most High God. And you see the dragon demanding his own burnt offerings, mocking the Most High God. Remember that the God of this world has blinded the minds of the people. But let me ask you a question. What exactly is an altar? What is it made out of? And what is it made for? Of course, we look to the Word of God as our foundation. And we already have teachings on this mystery on our website called The Altars of Light and Darkness. One of the most life-changing messages the Almighty has ever given me. So we won't go into too much detail, but just enough for you to gain the understanding of this mystery and expose what the enemy is truly after. You see, the reality is there are different altars within the scriptures made by different things for different purposes. But you see, that's the thing. There is a common denominator. You need fire, normally a bowl and a plate for the offering, water, you need coals, you need smoke and incense, and so on and so forth. But that's when it hit me. In the occult, in Mystery Babylon, there are also many altars. Some are portable that witches will have tutorials on that people can take with them on the road to continue to sin against the Most High God. And there are greater altars in size, hidden around the earth. Some are in plain sight. So have you considered that if an altar is something that a person makes a sacrifice on and they use fire and or coals of fire, they use water, they have a bowl for their offering, there's smoke and incense involved. Would it be safe to say that the hookah is clearly an altar dedicated to Baal, the false god of smoke? Before we break this down piece by piece, let us watch a quick video so we can have an understanding, so we can see with our own eyes what makes up this demonic hookah in the first place. Otherwise known as goza, nongale, hookah, or hobbly bubbling. The bowl where the shisha goes. The plate which catches the ash. The stem which the smoke flows through. gasket, a mechanism that closes and stops the smoke from going back up. The vase, where there's water. The hose, where the smoke exits the pipe. This is shisha. It's usually mixed with treacle and or honey and fruit flavouring. Coals are lit and placed on top of the shisha to make it burn. The person then inhales through the hose, which pulls the smoke through the stem and gasket into the vase, which is full of water. The smoke then mixes with the water, causing the bubbling sound that flows out through the hose into a person's mouth and lungs. That's the basics of how a shisha pipe works. You know, there is a saying in the occult, as above, so below. The dragon's greatest desire is to be like the Most High God in as many ways as he can. But he perverts it, you understand? So just as the Most High God 
would require the children of Israel to perform rituals, ceremonies, and sacrifices using a bowl with water, fire, and coal, incense, and smoke, and of course a burnt offering. You can see the perversion of the dragon. Of course, there are many altars and many other ways that we can expose as the Lord leads us. But this one in particular, this hookah ritual, yes or no, does it have a bowl at the top for the offering with a plate underneath it, followed by a stem and a body that leads down to a vase or a bowl of water. And there is a combination that produces a greater spell on those who partake in this demonic ritual. But did you know that in other religions, they also use fire and water in their rituals? And it just so happens to be that in India, this occult practice takes place. So if we quickly break down this hookah, it is very evident. It is an altar brought down to a size that makes it not appear as such, that this is indeed what it is. And when they integrate the water into it, this also invokes water spirits from the marine kingdom. It isn't that fire is evil. It isn't that water is wicked. It's how these things are used. We have let this be known so many times. Lavender, sage, honey, oranges. These things belong to the Most High God. But the fallen angels, just as the days of Noah, would teach these magical arts to the people witchcraft and the occult, how to take that which was created by the Most High God and utilize them in demonic rituals, corrupting that which they offer. You understand? But did you know that they also integrate lavender, honey, flowers, orange peels into the actual hookah? In fact, they will put it into the water and on the surface, it sounds innocent. It's to clean the smoke and give it a lovely scent. But the reality is, just like in the documentary, The Occult World of Vaping, this is part of these potions and rituals. This is to introduce many different potions for different spells on those who partake in this demonic ceremony. Because we clearly know that witches love to use certain flowers and honey, sage and orange peels, and the list goes on when it comes to their demonic rituals. So as we break this down, the people blindly gather together in a circle. The altar of Baal is placed in the midst of the table. The offering is placed in the incantation bowl. The water is filled at the bottom of the hookah. And as they go through the menu, they pick out the spell that they want to invoke, mixing honey or oranges, flowers, into the ceremony. The coals are placed at the top, preferably three forming a triangle. And the occult Babylonian ritual begins. And as each one inhales the smoke and incense of Baal, their bodies are the temple, you see? So just as the Most High God would demand the offering and the sacrifice and this ritual would take place, filling the house, filling the temple with the smoke and incense, so the dragon 
demands that his temples, which are the human bodies, be filled with the smoke and incense of Baal. And as they pass the offering one to another, transferring spirits and even diseases in the mist. You see, the reality is the hookah was designed and broken down to represent the chakras as well as above, so below. You see, the base, the water represents the earth and the very top of the hookah represents the celestial plane. Even Satan walked up and down the heavenly realm on stones of fire. We'll leave that one alone. And when they poke all those holes in the tinfoil, it represents the stars above, but we'll leave that alone. Brothers and sisters, I need you to hear this very clear. There's something far more important to tell you than exposing the hookah. Although it is important, and yes, there are so many ways the dragon wants to deceive you. And this is why we are so dedicated to serve the Lord and to serve others, to warn as many as we can, telling them to repent and turn away from their sin and follow after the Lord God Almighty, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And we give him all the glory and we will continue to expose as many tactics that the devil is using. And this is why Satan hates this ministry because we stand for the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost and we expose the plans of Satan. But I will tell you this right now. We are in the midst of doing two major documentaries. And the reason why I stopped to put this video out is because I want you to hear this very clear. The Antichrist is operating through the beast system. You understand? Remember the image of the beast becomes alive. Artificial intelligence is already far more advanced than they're telling you, brothers and sisters. And the image of the beast is doing many things behind the scenes to wear out the saints and attack them. Haven't you noticed that sometimes you'll call somebody or they'll call you and it'll be like they didn't even know it the call didn't even show up on their phone. Emails that are sent that never make it to the destination. I'm sure there are many of you that have been reaching out not only to us, but to others in the body of Christ. And this image of the beast, which is alive, is wearing out the saints and they are operating out of psychological warfare and also to sow discord in the midst of the body of Christ. We have recently uploaded a trailer to a documentary coming out and the image of the beast is trying to keep it from being seen by as many as he can. I want you to think about this logically. Part three of the world is a stage has reached over a quarter million views but yet the trailer for part four is barely being watched many of you are telling us that you're not even getting notified when we're uploading and who knows if it's being blocked on the other end of certain people on the other end of people's devices do you think that makes any logic? Do you think that makes any sense? As people would say. How could part three be at over a quarter million views, but the trailer to part four seems to have been shadow banned? What is it they don't want you to see? There are people telling me that they have been unsubscribed to our channel without them even doing it themselves. 
I actually have a video in the past somebody sent me where they literally couldn't subscribe to our channel, but they could subscribe to any other channel. All right, yo, I need to hear these on the red, because if not, you get cold, you get lukewarm. We trying to stay hot fire in the spirit. Huh? There was a problem with the network 404. Let's try again, all right? We know technology be having issues, but let's try it again. There was a problem with the network 404. But look at how they're trying to hit. You're all set, but I'm trying to ring the bell. i seen another video of his. Let's try to see if it does it again. Let's pull it back up. Let's try another channel. Another. If it refreshes, refresh it. Huh? Let's see. Right here is my brother. Love you, Lou Wams. Love you with all my heart, spirit, and soul. I thought I was already subscribed. God bless you in Jesus' name. Appreciate you with my whole heart. Check it out. Keep the confirmation. Try to do it with another one. That's not his. Let's try. Let's try this worldly one. Gravity One Media. Bomb. Bomb. Satan knows the true servants of God and he'll try to do anything he can to stop you from learning the truth and hearing the word of the Lord from us. You have to take it upon yourselves to check this channel at least three times a week. You cannot trust in notifications. You cannot trust that everything is going to reach you digitally because the image of the beast, this artificial intelligence is a lie. We are closer to the last hour than you think. And there's something way worse than hookah that Satan wants to put into the bodies of billions of people that will literally change the book of their life and their genetic code. You see, brothers and sisters, the name of the Most High God is written in the sequence of your DNA. You can't count on one hand true ministries that are warning you about the abomination and exposing as much as we do. And we give all the glory to Yahshua the Messiah, Jesus Christ. But it's gotten to the point. If other YouTube channels say they believe in Christ and they are not warning you about the abomination, they are not crying out like trumpets. It's time for you to stop feeding off the wrong tables. Mark them and avoid them as the word has commanded you. How could so-called shepherds in this last hour not be crying out against the abomination? In this season of silence, is the calm before the storm. We have warned you to stay ready for you that are faithful, that have not bowed the knee to the beast and took upon his name in your body and received his number and allowed his number to roam in the midst of your genetic makeup and nanoparticles. Get ready and get your house in order because we are running out of time. The river Euphrates is almost completely dried up. And that prophecy is in Revelation chapter 16. So you do the math. Are you ready to face the Lord God on the throne? Are you living a life of sin? You see this video, I took the time, hours, I had to stop on the other projects that we are working on to get this video done. But the plan was to give you this message within the message. This is far more important than telling you about a hookah altar that you should have enough intelligence not to mess with in the first place. And if you don't know Jesus Christ, 
I'm going to offer you a prayer at the end of this video. And maybe you've given your life to Christ and you're worried because you partook in this ritual of the hookah. Yes, we will do a prayer when I am finished. But there was a plan with this video. My hopes is that you will help spread every message we upload. You have to help us fight against the image of the beast, which is alive. Are you understanding? And don't be so quick to be offended with people. The enemy is trying to sow discord in the midst of the body of Christ. Don't assume people ain't calling you. Don't assume we're not returning emails. Don't assume these things. Don't assume your email gets to us. Don't assume you're getting notified on YouTube or any other platform. You have to take charge and be vigilant in this last hour. Because Satan is the god of this world. You understand? And I'm telling you, this is real. And this is the real message that I wanted to tell you in the midst of this message about exposing the hookah. One can be forgiven if they repent from doing the hookah. But what about those who take the abomination? We continue to cry out. We continue to warn people with tears in our eyes. But yet, 70% that surround you are the temples of the Antichrist spirit. And he is looking at you through their eyes. And there will come a time. And if you don't change and start to serve Christ, you will regret every moment of it. Because they will betray you to death. The love of God is leaving many. Hearts are getting colder. You better turn to the Lord. You better serve Christ while you can because you are not promised tomorrow. And the most terrifying thing is to face God the Father without Jesus Christ, Yahshua, by your side. Now that I have given you the message that the Father wanted me to tell you. And you understand that this video was only used as a Trojan horse to get a deeper message into the fortified gates of digital Babylon that tries to shut down those that serve Christ and keep them from reaching you digitally. Brothers and sisters, we love you so much. Make sure you check our YouTube channel at least three times a week. Check our website. Make sure you're gathering together with children of God. Make sure you're reading your word. Make sure you're praying without ceasing. Make sure you fast as often as Christ commands you to. Abstain from sin. Be quick to forgive and slow to anger. Learn the fruit of the Holy Spirit because I'm telling you right now, we will not make it without the mighty Holy Ghost. We love you so much. We labor because of our love for Christ and because we love you and we give him all the glory. Without him, we can't do nothing, but we can do all things through him who gives us strength. Now, with that being said, if you've ever been involved with hookah or any type of Baal worship, I want you to simply say, Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Yahshua the Almighty, please forgive me of all of my sins and wash me in your holy blood, mind, body, soul, and spirit. I forgive all those that have hurt me and I forgive my enemies. I renounce and reject and rebuke all of the occult, all Baal worship. If I've ever been involved with any smoking rituals, whether cigarette, vaping, marijuana, the hookah, or any other means of sorcery, 
If I've partook in any demonic altars, I tear it down, I reject it, I renounce it, and I am clear from this sin because the blood of Jesus Christ washes me clean. Lord Jesus Christ, I believe you are the Son of God. Emmanuel, God with us. I bow my knee to the Lord God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. I ask you to fill me with your fruit. Fill me with the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Give me a hunger and a thirst for your presence, for your ways, and for your word. Help me to hate what you hate and love what you love. Fill me with the fear of the Lord. Lord God Almighty, I want to serve you and only you, O Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. So Jesus Christ, be my shepherd. Yeshua the Messiah, lead me and guide me. Protect me and keep me from falling. I don't want to be rejected by you. So I am coming to you right now, receiving your grace and mercy. As I repent, help me to prove my repentance by my deeds and my actions. If I'm going to be born again, I have to change my ways. Teach me your ways, Lord Jesus Christ. And Lord, bring the body of Christ together despite the image of the beast warring against us, trying to sow discord. Help us to be united in Christ. And we will stand as we stand in the battlefield against Satan and his kingdom, against all witchcraft, against all of the occult, against all of the new age, false religions and their doctrines, Freemasonry and everything of the devil. We stand against it in the name of Yeshua the Messiah, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We stand for the kingdom of heaven as we honor and serve God the Father through Jesus Christ and by the Holy Spirit. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Yeshua the Messiah, we pray. Amen. Now, brothers and sisters, let me pray for you that are sincere, you that really, truly want to serve the Lord, you that are desperate for a touch from Christ. Father God, in the almighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Son of the living God, Yeshua the Messiah, I pray for those, Lord, that are sincere. You know who they are. I pray that every curse, every spell be broken off of them right now. In Jesus Christ's mighty name. Those things that can be broken, except you need them to pray and fast, oh God. I pray they will obey and fast. Because some demons do not come out except by prayer and fasting. I pray they will live holy and righteous and not use your grace as a napkin to wipe their lips as they live a life of sin. But they will choose to strive to live holy honoring you by their lifestyle father god for those that are sincere i pray right now all powers of darkness all forces of evil spirit of depression all all demons of the occult pornea all demons in the mind everything that the devil has been piling up in you i command to loosen and break now in the name of jesus christ Get out of that temple in the name of Jesus Christ. By the sound of Christ in my voice, I command the powers of the occult, all powers of witchcraft, all magic, everything of the occult to break off of those that are hearing the sound of Christ in my voice. Those that are sincere, I pray right now in the name of Jesus Christ for a renewing of their mind to be renewed, stirred up, and lit on fire. For Yeshua the Messiah. For Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Yeshua the Messiah. 
Amen. Brothers and sisters, Lord willing, we will continue to serve you. We will continue to upload different videos with different topics. We have two very important documentaries coming out. If you haven't seen the trailer, it'll be in the description box below. Please get your house in order. Please be prepared because you don't know what tomorrow holds. The world we know is a stage. Holds tomorrow. We love you all so much. Bless. The whole